What's going on everyone and welcome to a very special video. Today we are going over the round two of the Bellatro Invitational. We have Dr. Spectred here to commentate with me. Me and Bellatro University are going to go back and forth discussing how we went about our runs, where we went differently, probably talking about the game in general considering we had an hour to do these runs so we'll have plenty of time to talk. But I do want to say very quickly this video is pretty special. I saw Blotcher University in one of his posts talk about donating to the Trevor Project. That's an organization that means a lot to me and a lot of people close to me. So all the profits from this video, all the AdSense will go to a donation to the Trevor Project. And I am also going to personally match all the AdSense that's made um, for the first month and donate that as well. And if you want to donate, link in the description. Without further ado, Dr. Spectred, Professor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, it's Bellatro University. If you want to check me out on YouTube, I right now I'm doing Bellatro every day. And so every day, mostly doing new challenges every day. Uh, we started out doing, you know, just kind of like the completionist stuff, getting all the decks unlocked, getting all the gold stakes. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of back footage if you are interested in learning a little bit or a lot. <laughs> I know that Personally, I have a lot of backlog too, and I go watch my early Bellatro gameplay and I cringe. So I'm tempted to almost scrap that, but I'm glad someone's doing <laughs> it and doing it right. All right, so let's jump into it. We're starting these simultaneously. And uh, so round two was on the blue deck. And I think the best way to start this video is what was your initial strategy for kind of the beginning of the round? Were you even thinking about mapping the seed or were you just like, let me play all the way through it as fast as I can. And then maybe if I have time for a second run, I'll do a second run. Yeah. So it's kind of what you said there is, uh, just play as fast as possible, go as far as possible. The plan was if I go further, more rounds means more money and more shops. And so whatever kind of, maybe I miss a joker early on, I can make up for it later on. Um, I'm not going to say that that was the best way to play it, but that's what my game plan was going in. No, and I think the more, you know, looking back at the tournament now, I feel like, like you said, maybe it's not the best way, but it's definitely how I'm going to approach the next time we have a tournament in this kind of format, um, which I hope there is more of. I tried to map the seed a little bit, and I realized, and we, we saw it in the fourth round, which you already covered very well on your channel, and again, I'm very humbled by the video you made, and I do think you actually did deserve to win round four, um, but that 10 minutes I spent just messing around the first, you know, two antis trying to perfect it was silly. Like I didn't need to do that. And if I could have had those 10 minutes back, that might've been the difference. So I think the way you approached it, especially for playing on white sake difficulty is the way to go. Now, if there's a tournament on different difficulty, I'm kind of curious how we change, how the, how the strategies will change. Yeah, you know, it can kind of go either way. Uh, you know, they gave us as a resource, they said we could restart. And so, you know, there's a good incentive there to restart. Mm -hmm. If that's what they're giving you, use the resources that they give you. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take you more than a minute or two to map out the first ante or maybe even the first two antes. And so, you know, a dollar saved in the first couple of rounds can have like huge snowball effects. Yeah. Uh, especially like the booster packs there. It's like, if I don't know what the contents are, then I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to take the risk, but it could be worth it. And, you know, if you don't map it, then you don't know. Exactly. I mean, who knows if there's a tribulet in there, that's the, that was one of my fears. Um, and we're going to get into the gameplay you're seeing on the screen very shortly, but I did have an unreasonable fear, especially with how often legendary show up. It's not often enough to really be that scared, but I'm like, what if they all got the tribulet and I don't get it and then there's no chance I win? That was, it crept into my head a little bit. Uh, my, my thoughts were, you know, if there's tribulet shows up, you can do similar things with idol or, you know, other kind of jokers. True. And so, you know, if I'm going for, if I'm not playing for speed, if I'm just playing for, you know, like a really long run, endless run or whatever, I'll pass on like early scoring jokers so like if idol shows up too early i'll pass on it sock and buskin shows up early i'll pass on it um it's not until like anti you know seven or eight before i start picking those up actually no that that's a good point and that's a core difference i think we had that we'll probably discuss later 
but I'm curious now, let's talk about what's on screen. So well, we both kind of had an early restart here, saw a little bit of the early shops. As soon as I saw that Invis Joker and Vagabond, I immediately thought, I'm going to copy Vagabond. I'm going to just create hundreds of tarot cards and create the perfect deck. And you went a, a little bit differently. And I think this is the really interesting part of our two runs is you went with, I think, what your strategy was for all the rounds, which is win fast, you know, use stuntmen, build a huge economy, and then I'll do the tarot card generation and deck manipulation that way. Yeah, you know, if you have more shops, you get more booster packs, and then you're able to get more tarot cards that way. Um, I actually, you know, looking back on it, I actually think this is a misplay. I think uh, I should have done more with the Vagabond. And so, you know, sort of realizing this in the later rounds, you know, having the deck manipulation earlier, you know, before you have even any kind of scoring stuff, then it's way easier to get idle to work. You know, if that's going to be the main scoring thing. But what was on my mind was, okay, I want... You know, the best scenario is you get uh, the Baron and the Mime, of course. And so, you know, let's build some kind of high card thing. And then also that way we can just, you know, play very quickly if we're just playing high card. Um, and so I wasn't use, using the Vagabond at all, basically. Just one tarot card per round and dropped it soon after. That's interesting that you feel like it's a misplay because you still ended up winning this round, but I know there's definitely, I think we both could have perfected this a little bit better. And there is something to say that I got very lucky that I used a wheel that granted I was able to get because of Vagabond, but it landed with holographic on my invis joker, which allowed my invis joker to actually have some kind of utility to my run. And I was able to hold on to it for much longer, basically, and not even have to worry about the shops. Um, it was for sure. Yeah. You know, some people get kind of mad, you know, if the addition goes on the invisible joker and it's like, oh, I was going to get rid of that one anyway. But, you know, having the addition on it means you get to keep it for longer and save it for when you actually care about using it. Yeah, and granted, I did want to use it almost right away because I wanted to make more tarot cards, but I also was going to wait for a shop where I got right here, you know, as they say on your channel, you bet on banana. And I wanted, <laughs> wanted a, a decent joker to pair with my vagabonds before... I just got rid of it. Yeah, it could be. So, at this point, it's kind of funny looking at your side because it reminds me of my gold stake runs. Um, was this, because I haven't watched all the way through all four rounds, was kind of high card, very simple, again, maximizing the economy, the route you went for kind of the base uh, antes? Or was this a little bit different because you, you got a stuntman, you got a supernova, you got a banner? Uh, so we did end up getting the stuntman here, but my plan every time was to try to make that work. And so even if you don't get the stuntman, you can still get banner, bus, um, mm -hmm. erosion's pretty good. You know, there's a lot of options for you want some kind of pl flat plus molt. And then if you're able to win with fewer jokers then you're able to have more joker slots for value generators like the vagabond even though i wasn't using it to its full potential like that's the kind of thing that i was trying to do every time and uh you can also if you're winning with fewer cards played then you can have more room in your hand for things like you know gold cards that makes a ton of sense i mean i <laughs> it sounds so simple um, and I think my comment section in chat sometimes gives me a little too much credit. But one thing I always say is, you know, I believe like me and you, we, we eventually get to the same conclusions, but I swear you always get there earlier. And I just appreciate that. I think your brain works in a very great way for this game. Um, <laughs> cause it's like, that's I so simple. I got a lot of hours, man. I got a lot of experience. <laughs> it's true. But it's like, it's such a simple concept, right? That's like, oh. If I play less cards, more cards can be in my hand for gold. And it's like, well, duh, that's why high card makes so much sense for this, to get the economy yeah. going. I mean, that's, uh, that's why I'm the Balachonomics professor. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm stuck in the philosophy in the liberal arts department. Um, <laughs> so here was a big thing, is the fact that you got antimatter. And I think that, you know... You saying maybe you had a little bit of a misplay, but me going for, for my double Vagabond, that was never really going to happen because I never, you're never going to have an economy going 
unless you can get maybe an egg or a gift card like you also got. Um, so you, then your economy can be temperances in between rounds. But because I didn't have that early game economy, I didn't get antimatter. And I mean, I imagine that's the diff the small difference in our score. That's probably where you're looking at it. Yeah, uh, one extra joker slot that makes a big difference scoring wise. But I think also just um, you know what I was saying about survivability. And so you know having the extra joker slot for the abstract joker. And then that gives me, you know, I have room for things like the gift card. And so I can make more money per round. So let's, I'm kind of, this is a very basic concept. Um, yeah, but maybe. I was, no, the, the, the idea hey, what, about, the go stuff that's basic to us, you know, it might not be basic to everybody. And no, and that's what I was about to get at is I often think of temperance, the idea. The, the value of temperance. Oh, I just hit my mic. Sorry, anybody watching. But what egg and gift card do, if you go back and watch my Joker tier list video, I obviously did not appreciate it enough. <laughs> you can see me making the rounds, apologizing to people in my comment section. Um, but I still <laughs> think I struggle to explain why egg or why gift card is so valuable, especially for these high score runs. So I'm curious to see your quick 20 second explanation on why yeah, so, temperance is so important yeah so the way that it works you know egg gains three dollars value every round if you get temperance one time anytime you know whether it's three rounds from now or six rounds from now it will pay for every you know retroactive round it goes back into the past and it gives you three dollars for every round that you've passed mm -hmm. and so once you hit that one temperance egg changes from instead of three dollars per round now it's six dollars per round Exactly. And I, what I'm also, what I try and get across to, to my chat and my comments when going after high scores is you want lots of tarot cards, you want lots of deck manipulation, and eventually you probably end up with both tarot vouchers. There was times I, I recently got my personal best unseated. Um, you were in chat for a little bit, a little bit of it. I was getting three hundred and fifty dollars in four re-rolls because temperance comes up so often if you have that egg if you have that gift card now gift cards obviously a little bit better because you could end up just making the jokers you actually use your blueprints your idols worth enough that every temperance is fifty dollars yeah so yeah um if i'm going for you know high scoring stuff you know whether i'm trying to play fast or whether i'm trying to like play long in both scenarios uh i actually don't like the tarot vouchers in the shop really because i'm able to get so many tarot cards from other sources and what i'm looking for in the shop are going to be those rare jokers you know blueprint and brainstorm and if you have the tarot merchant it's going to be just harder to get their rares i would <laughs> i'm sure someone maybe you maybe myself maybe we could we could start a google sheet together I wonder if we did the math, if the temperance is like getting both and then considering how often temperance and hermit would come up with your rerolls, like which one is actually better for getting the blueprints, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you. if you have, you know, more tarot cards per roll, then you have more money per roll on average. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get temperance every roll, but you're going to get enough of them over, you know, a number of rerolls. And then so maybe that makes up for spending extra rerolls, right? That's been my themselves. that's been my thought process as of late, but it's been flip flopping because it was flipped the other direction. Then you actually made a comment about buying the liquidation voucher, especially since you know we're talking gift card, we're talking egg, and what it does for temperance. I was like, oh, it clicked, and then all of a sudden I started really thinking about. It. I'm like. I think with these tarot vouchers, if I get both upgrade, I get enough money where I actually get more searching, get more rerolls for searching for blueprint than I would without it. But the fact there's more jokers because you don't have it, you know, this is the advanced uh, course at Bellagio University. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, what I think about is like, you know, people pay a lot of attention to the first couple rerolls, how much it costs. You know, it's like, oh, with, with the reroll voucher, it's going to be like $3 and then $4 and $5. Mm -hmm. I think about, you know, what is the last reroll that I'm doing? True. Now, if I'm doing 10 rerolls per round, actually every reroll costs 
you know, $13, not $3. Every ruble costs $13, $14, dollars And so if I'm not getting temperance in two rerolls, then it's, you know, not worth it to have the tarot voucher. That's a good point. That's a very good point. All right, now going back to the game a little bit, trying to give an update of where we each are. Uh, yeah, so if you look, go ahead. if you look at what I got going on, so because I'm scoring so much with just Swashbuckler and the um, Stuntman, I have room for things like Rocket and To the Moon and the Gift Card and the Vagabond. That's that was the point I was gonna make. Is we're here. Um, we're, so you're at anti six. I'm a little bit back in anti four. I was playing a little bit slower at this point, but your economy is literally no pun intended to the moon. Um, <laughs> while my decks kind of turned into that all King deck that I was looking to make. And I wonder, you know, you kind of went back and talked about maybe a slight misplay. I wonder if at this point I should have been looking to kind of pivot out of the Vagabond build. It's kind of like, I made so many kings at this point, I'm in such a good spot, do I really need to keep making these tarot cards? Hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, here, you know, if you're playing the kings, you're playing like flush fives, right? Um, yeah. Then again, that goes back to having less room left over in your hand for the gold cards. So, you know, maybe maybe you stay on Vagabond, but maybe you pivot to something else. And so, you know, the high card, it gives you like 10 chips and one molt compared to like Flush 5 gives you 40 chips and three molt. Mm -hmm. the, the difference there is, is four times as many chips and then three times as much molt. And so it's 12 times as much score, which seems like a lot, but you could think of it as, okay, well, if high card is only one twelfth of the score, and for you know, I have four extra cards that could be steel cards, could be red steel cards, and then you actually score more with high card compared to flush five, even without any jokers. That's a again, that's just something that, and this is why I'm glad we're doing this. Is hearing that just being said out loud, and why your videos are so great. Go su subscribe to Blotter University right now if you're watching this on my channel. Um, you just hearing it, you're like, that makes sense. Why am I not doing that? But it's, it's one of those concepts that even people, you know, a lot of people, I think in both of our channels love this game and they love thinking about this game. They love learning about this game, but it's still not something that always is just going to come naturally to your thought process. Um, and honestly, it's funny because it's like, we literally, the round after this have a Baron build that happens and it's put on display how powerful, you know, I mean, obviously there we had Baron in mind, but still high card with just the steals, the amount of points you're talking about. So it's a really interesting concept. One thing I felt like we didn't get in any of these, not to complain, but I swear we didn't get the painted voucher like at all, all four rounds. Oh yeah, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't remember. <laughs> Cause I mean, to, to your point, to the way you play, it's really important, right? Like that extra card is either an extra 1.5 molt if you have the steel or extra $3. Or again, if you're talking mime and red seals, you're, you know, uh, multiplicating that. So, it, I mean, I put it as one of my, as an S tier voucher, as like a must grab every single time. I assume you probably agree with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, people ask me for like a voucher tier list. You know, like, mm -hmm. okay, well, which one should I be buying? And basically there's the two that you don't buy and then you just buy all the other ones and so you don't really need a, need a tier list what you need is to manage your money better so you can afford every one every time <laughs> that's i love that i, I love that concept <laughs> that's probably a really good point um so there was an interesting decision i don't think everyone's gonna question it but there might be a couple of people questioning you had an ectoplasma pop up i think we've discussed and you could probably deduce a lot of the reasons why you wouldn't have grabbed the ectoplasm at that point but if you want to just go over it because i know i faced the same exact decision right here yeah it just comes down to what is my final five going to look like where are my final jokers going to look like do i want to give up hand size to have you know what would be the best negative if i had like a negative uh burn choker or a negative swashbuckler all of mm -hmm. those are irrelevant in the final build yep 
And that's, uh, even with mine, <laughs> I ended up, I think at the end of this, I never, and, and here's the point of, I didn't have the economy going because of the way I built everything out. Now I did have the deck manipulation, but I didn't even really find replacements for Vagabond. Um, but even then, that would have been the only thing there that I would want to turn negative. I definitely didn't want to sacrifice hand size for a negative Vagabond in the end game. So that quite a few times got brought up, I feel like, in chat. Um, and I oh, saw were they some getting mad at you? No, my chat was getting mad at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um, I saw just, I was watching, because I've watched so many of the VODs, because this was such a fun thing. I just saw it quite a bit, you know, Frost or other people, just one-off people being like, why wouldn't you grab an Ectoplasma? An extra Joker saw is so important. And like we said, with the Antimatter, yes, but Ectoplasma, it's committed to a certain Joker. And if you don't have a Joker you want in the end game, then it's pointless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you do get short-term gains in theory. You're able, with an extra Joker slot, you have an extra, you know, value-generating Joker. Extra tarot-generating Joker, maybe. Yeah. Um, or the tarot generators you have, you get to hold on for longer if you have an extra Joker that's giving you scoring or something like that. But, um, you know, long-term, having the minus hand size is really just... Too crippling. So, I also heard you just because it popped up on screen, and I swear this Joker just popped up hundreds of times on my rerolls. Bloodstone. Um, in your little video yeah. you put out before the tournament, you said maybe we would use Bloodstone. I kind of yeah. said in my video before the tournament, I'm not touching Bloodstone because it's it just doesn't hit enough when you're talking about one in three. You're basically at times two. You're talking about, I don't know the math on that, 0.7 molt per played card per heart. What, what are your thoughts now, kind of after your tournament? Uh, oh, yeah. Bloodstone is bait. So okay. <laughs> it, if you if you have no re-triggers, it's times four on average. And so, you know, half the time it's only times two, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you do have the re-triggers, then it's something closer to like times 13 or something like that. Um, which, you know, is very replaceable. You could do that with other things. If you have, like, a lot of re-triggers, then, of course, then it's good. But, you know, one of the hard parts about the Bloodstone is just, like, holding on to it for a while. And it kind of baits you into putting faith in it when you shouldn't be. So you're like, oh, I'm going to play this flush, and it'll be worth plenty of points. You know, I already got the sock and Buskin, and I'll get the re-triggers, and then it just doesn't happen. And in the final round, that that's what happened to me. It ended me. Yeah, it almost cost you the tournament. Um, yeah, this... Yeah. Due to my relationship with Space Joker, which is canon at this point, um, we knew it started out rough. And the fact that I saw what Space Joker could do to my run by not hitting 13 straight times, it kind of... It, it always prepared me for what Bloodstone could do. But in general, I just felt that it definitely could make the difference because like you're saying with the re-triggers you're time you're talking about times uh and right here you get the holographic brainstorm really deep in re-rolls on anti-8 which you were right a lot of other people weren't going to find due to the economy you built so i wanted to point that out um yeah and i did call that out too yeah no <laughs> I like, no hey, i stole your this. words get <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing about bloodstone is even if I did have Sock and Buskin and Brainstorm Sock and Buskin, I was kind of like, I don't think this will be the difference between winning and losing at any point. I think I always rather be, there's just some other utility I'd rather have, whether that is Vagabond or an economy joker or just helping my run carry along versus trying to carry it. Um, and that was kind of my thought process going in. I was like, I don't care how many times it comes up, I'm not going to be baited into trying to make it work. Now, granted, it just hit right there for you, and that probably felt really good. I think it hit four times. Well, you, we you were, are brainstorming. We were, late enough, we were late enough that we had high enough level uh, flush five that it didn't need to hit. There you go. And then the seltzer. Now, this is what I ended up getting later. I did open up that pack, but... Yeah. It's, oh. it's a done deal now. You know, we've got the re-triggers. We've got uh, both the bloodstone and the idol. So, this is kind of an interesting part, and this is, we were talking a little bit before we started recording, is 
I guess, risk inversion. Um, and when we go back to the basics of each of these builds, I was so nervous that the idol wasn't going to proc when I needed it to that I led towards the deck manipulation right away, the, the double Vagabond build. You know what, I'm going to hope that I get the right jokers at the end, but at least I know my deck will be in the right place versus you were looking at it as if my economy's there, I can know I can eventually get the right jokers and I really just need enough Kings of Hearts that the idol eventually plays for me. Um, was there any worry at any point that it was like the idol just, well, I mean, right here, I mean, if we look at the video, we're still only halfway through. There's 33 minutes left. So you're probably saying, you probably felt pretty good. You're like, I know the idol eventually is going to hit when I, where I need it to. Yeah. So here, you know, I did say that, you know, I'm not a big fan of the bloodstone, but here it did carry, right? It did yeah. what it needed to do. Um, and so it both served a short term purpose of carrying us where we don't need the idol and also served this long term purpose of giving us a, small boost to our score that's a good relatively point. small you know still a big boost but relative to the other stuff that we had going on no no i mean times 13 at the end that's moving you up uh an, a zero you know it's moving you up an e yeah, in those yeah, places yeah. so that's a very good point actually um that you know speak speaking through that i see a little bit more value on the idol now because this did allow you to be like okay i don't have all I don't, maybe I don't have, like, Zeno has 52 Kings of Hearts in, in my deck and the idol hitting every single time. But what I do have is Bloodstone, which is going to get me through anti probably 13 if you have Seltzer and Sock and Buskin. Yeah, so maybe that's, like, a lesson in, like, risk aversion is, like, you... What was I going to say? The, um... You don't take the Bloodstone early because you can't afford for it to not hit. Yeah. But if you have it later after you already have the retriggers, then it's fine. Then it only needs to do times two once or twice, possibly. Yeah. No. And I think that was, you know, in, in the final round, uh, I went with the Bloodstone because it was like in the first shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it ended up betraying me. And so that was, you know, we shouldn't have picked it up that early. I think that's a good, I think that's the way I'm going to play my, uh, you know, again, if we, if we play more tournaments and stuff like that, or just going for these high, um, scoring, <sighs> see, I originally said, now I'm curious on your thoughts on this really quick. Um, cause your build is so beautiful that I'm sure the viewership can just sit back and watch <laughs> at this point. Do you think <laughs> because of bloodstone and what we're talking about right here, where you, it's like, you know what? It can kind of carry you towards the end if you have the retriggers and you can wait for the idol to, to proc when you need it to get that high score. Kings of Hearts, the very best card. Uh, oh, was that a question? It yeah. is a question. <laughs> so if, if you're going Mime and Baron, then it doesn't matter what flavor king you have. And yeah. so it's better to have like a split so that if you get like a, a suit debuff boss, then... You know, it's not going to hurt you that bad. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, you know, hearts have the slight edge because of the bloodstone. Because you can do this my, while you're waiting for your idol. My thought is, and I have to do the math, because I think if I just sat down and did the basic math, I would figure out very quickly, is if we're excluding plasma, my chat knows my thoughts on the plasma deck. I'm not a... I think it's too powerful. I think it should be considered kind of separate when you're talking about Blotro high scores and stuff. But that there might be credence to the King of Spades if you can get an Arrowhead. But do you really? Can you really afford to have a slot for that Arrowhead? And does it make that big of a difference? Oh, it makes no. It makes no difference at all. It makes no contribution. Okay. Well, there we go. I, That's. I think people just really misunderstand. Uh, you know how the plasma deck actually works and you know how much the differential between chips and mold oh matters. i'm talking about anything but the plasma deck i mean excluding oh, sure. the plasma okay. deck. yeah yeah so you know let's say you get uh the arrowhead and you have like a bunch of retriggers um how much more chips are you going to get more than your base like if your uh let's see here your flush five let's say flush five base is 200 you know mm -hmm. you don't have it leveled up that high and then let's say with the retriggers 
uh, you know, five cards is 250, and then with the retriggers, maybe you're getting, let's say, a thousand molt, or sorry, a thousand chips. That's still only times six. Eggs, okay. Right? Like campfire can yep. get you times six, so you don't need the, <laughs> uh, what is it, the, the arrowhead at all. That's such a good point. Um, yeah, you know what? I mean, there we just did the math very quickly. I was thinking it's probably like the more I thought about, it, I'm like, we it can't be more than times ten. And then if we're talking about times ten, like you said, if campfire can outplay it, it's not that good of a card for high scores. <laughs> yeah, if you want times ten, you got to get up to like three thousand chips, two thousand chips. Yeah. Which the one joker is just you know because people will say, oh, why don't you take the bull? You know, the bull's giving you like two thousand chips. It doesn't matter. It it does not. And I even after we were playing. The final round and I was just messing around with my chat. I did at one point said like, oh, I should have taken the bull because I could use some chips right now. And I kind of looked back and I was like, no, I, no, I don't need chips right now at all. <laughs> because it, everything here is timesing, is helping me times more than by f like three. And adding 100 chips at that point, my base was at like 450. Heck, 100 chips wasn't even adding a whole timesing by one. Um, I'll probably... If you're confused in the comments, let me know and I'll jump on MS Paint or Google Sheets really quick and explain what's happening right here, like actually mathematically. I kind of want to do that more often. So your quick question as a content creator, because I'm treating this a little bit like a podcast. Um, sure. How do you feel about going into, because I recently did this on my latest video of just, I went into Google Docs and I just showed the math that's going on. I know not everyone's going to love that. I kind of love it. Do you foresee yourself doing that kind of uh, video in the future? Uh, I think there's some utility there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, for most things, it's like, oh, why doesn't he do this or whatever? It's like, I don't want to learn to do like the editing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, uh, valid. And so like, you know, when I, I did, I did put out a video uh, about like how I do the mental math and like figure out, oh, if this joker is giving me this number of chips and this other one's giving me this amount of molt, then like how much is each one worth in my build? And like, which is the weakest link if I want to replace it for something else in the shop? And so I did that whole explanation with just, you know, the game was essentially frozen, right? Like we're just looking at the screen here with the jokers at the top and I was just talking over it without any kind of like anything to look at. Yeah. Um, and that video is terrible. You shouldn't watch that. <laughs> Well, I do love that. I mean, I knew we were going to run into this. So with granted, our scores were close, but you definitely could have kept going at this point and just been like, eh, you know what? Let me let me see if Idol can proc again. Um, yeah, but your we, seltzer we had out. enough kings. It wasn't really about the Idol necessarily, oh. but we we had the seltzer. And so, you know, we had extra retriggers. And I was like, OK, well, that's that's pretty good. That's good enough. Um, what I didn't have in like this final hand that I used to score was it didn't have that many glass cards. And so even without the seltzer, if we just went a couple more rounds and made more glass cards, we could have put up much bigger numbers still. So I stand corrected. He still kicked my butt even in this round. Just, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Um, so speaking of that, uh, this is going back a second here about chips and whatnot. I do mm -hmm. think it's very important. If, you're, if you've gone this deep in this video, you probably understand it, but I want to make it kind of clear that the way Bellatro works, uh, just because I just saw a comment fly by on my chat, is that when we are talking about super high scores, and we're talking about the idol, we're talking about Bloodstone, we're talking about glass cards and steel, that is all happening before any of the additional or multiplicative molt from your jokers in the joker slots. And what does that mean? That means that the brainstorm being holographic up there literally does not matter. The plus 10 is happening after Dr. Spectre got to a billion or, you know, 15 trillion molt. So I see this question a lot. Is Wheel of Fortune worth it? Do you think we, the, the wheel is worth it? Or would you rather keep, like, let's say you're going for your personal best, like, unseated. Um, and we're not 
not a perco run <laughs> in this example or even a yeah, maybe yeah, perco yeah. run but you you want to keep would you do you want to keep those jokers unenhanced or unadditioned would be the proper term so they can become negative or do you still you're like eh, why not why not make them foil or get the chance at the point 1.5 from polychrome yeah so it's like you know is it worth it to re-roll the shop like at all mm -hmm. right you have a very low chance of getting anything that helps you but then you do and then it helps you a lot and so you know maybe you could think of the wheel like that where you know most of the time you're going to get nothing you can get foil holographic or whatever but then there's like the one in i don't know something like uh 70 times you get the polychrome and mm -hmm. then also it's still nothing <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know, like times um I, I just i do the wheel because uh you know what the heck else am i doing with my money right yeah um though technically speaking probably it's low yield enough that you shouldn't be doing it and then also you know every time you use the wheel then if a fool comes up maybe it copies your wheel instead of copying let's say temperance or whatever so like sometimes um like even priestess or emperor i'll skip using those so that i can maintain you know if the fool copies temperance perhaps that makes a lot of sense that's a that's a good point and so yeah that's i think the the thing you brought up a really good point also it's kind of like the main consideration is if your jokers are not additioned then they can become negative and if you do have an addition like here the the brainstorm has the holographic on it that one cannot become negative exactly and i remember not this is not throwing murphy under the bus you were you and murphy when murphy got his personal best were streaming together um absolutely great content um, check out Murphy but I remember he kept hitting the wheel because it's at the same time we have to remember we're content creators like you said what the hell else are you doing with the money you're probably not sitting there yeah. trying to make everything negative min max to the max but I was sitting there I was like please stop hitting the wheel because I what if you got an ectoplasma and what if you get then an invis joker and can make another blueprint Murphy you could get the e e100 and I'm not going to spoil the video that's coming out in the future with my personal best but that was a core part of it was having lots of negative blueprints um now granted that doesn't work with a barren mind build i was going for the glass red seal flush five build um because if you have a mind build you don't want to hurt your hand size hey, well you know here's the thing um it's still the first couple are still worth it even though it hurts your hand size mm -hmm. it can still yeah. be worth it to pick up an extra joker extra retriggers but uh you know getting back to the wheel um the yield is so low, you know, it's like one in four chance or whatever, that even if it does hit a couple times, even if you do pick up a couple additions, you'll still have plenty of other jokers left over that are non-additioned. That's true. Like you're you're like, gonna have like space. when are you when are you getting five wheel hits in the same run that now you can't get any negatives? <laughs> that I think that actually did happen to Murphy in that video. That's why it's possible. I <laughs> but yeah no I, I get what you're saying and you're also talking about at that point you're on anti-15 so he's probably hit the wheel 40 times <laughs> yeah it's a uh, it's also what you could do you know early on you don't know whether it's going to hit your blueprint or whether it's going to hit these other random jokers that you're holding on to mm -hmm. and so if you take that chance and it does land on you know your blueprint or whatever as long as you have an extra as long as you have something left over that you would want ectoplasm on then there is the other side of the coin where you get the foil or the holographic on let's say your vagabond and it's like oh, okay now i know that one's not going to be negative that's so it's, true i think it's worth it to remove and uh, eliminate jokers that way that's a really good point um I would be remiss if we didn't talk about because I think my run isn't going to last too much longer. Um, oh yeah. Do you we got not? Twenty minutes left, my guy. <laughs> I I do. I, I I don't. Do I use all twenty minutes? We'll see. We did get the bus and sock pretty soon here on the video. Um, yeah. And that's where the the scores end up being equal, despite you having a little bit more with that brainstorm. I had all the red seal glass kings from the vagabond and that's how we kind of equaled out despite you having the definite joker advantage from the economy um i mean we could speak to that a little bit like a glass and a red uh, seal are basically the, oh go ahead 
Oh, what I was going to say is I think the uh, the Joker advantage here was just uh, I went further, right? Like I went to Anti-11. I got to see more shops, like I said. Not necessarily I had access to more money. Like the, there was definitely one Anti where I rolled a little bit deeper and I found, like you said, the Brainstorm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, you know, here having the red seals that I didn't have and having like more glass cards than I did definitely makes up for having the Joker. And so... You know, I, th I think here, if we're talking about, like, you know, who's on a better pace, I think you're on a better pace here, even though you have less Jokers. Because you have the Red Seals and the class cards. And I think that was true in the, the last round as well. Well, that's what I was going to say, is... Even though I don't necessarily agree with the end result theory that it's like, I deserve to win that final, I do think there's something to say that the Red Seal on your Kings, if you're duping that card, in the glass, those are each a joker, right? Like the glass is the idol, the red seal is a sock and buskin in a way. Um, like it's not yeah. one for one because of brainstorm blueprint, but if you're able to do that, it's another way of assuring having those jokers that aren't taking up a joker spot. This is a little abstract of a theory, but I, I hope you're following. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, one disadvantage of leveling up the high card early on is then if you're trying to do something like Vagabond specifically, yes. then, you know, every hand that you play is a one-shot. Every hand <laughs> ends the round, and so you don't get to get as many tarot cards. Um, whereas if you don't level the high card and you only level the flush five, then you can get more tarot cards, you can get more manipulation that way. And so something that I wasn't managing super well was trying to score you know low enough not enough points so that the i would get more vagabond value i just ran into that on stream yesterday and it <laughs> it's one of the funniest things that can be frustrating in this game is like my strategy like not to say it was too good but it's like my <laughs> where i'm at is literally too good in this game to make vagabond worth it which is which can be frustrating um yeah, yeah yeah um and that was true you know in the in the demo versions there was like the old version of the eight ball where you would play a pair of eights or whatever to avoid scoring too much or mm -hmm. you know with the even the ride the bus you would play high card to level it up and then you would switch to some other kind of winning hand you know like play a full house or something like that see i I wasn't I wasn't around back then. I, I can't I was late to the Bellatro game. I came about halfway through the last demo, so you do have a little bit one up on me. But I have I mean we we heard about the eight ball changing in this update, and not as powerful as it was in the demo, but still gonna be maybe somewhat valid as a card. Um, there's still been some debate over whether it's every eight played has a one in four chance, or is it every eight scored, or is it every hand that contains an eight? Um, I can't remember mm. the exact language. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, right? Like, we know how powerful superposition is, and some would say <laughs> it's not very powerful, but I think it's fine. Yeah. And so, you know, what version of the eight ball would be similar power level? And so if it's like... There's, there's like a chance aspect to it, right? Didn't they say it was like one in four or something like that? You get a tarot card? I I do believe so, yeah. So if it's, oh, let, if it's like it was before where you play a hand that has an eight and then it has a one in four chance of giving you a tarot card, it's probably not that because that would be too weak. Yeah, so that's what I'm It's got to be something that's, you know, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So, I also had, and I want to talk through this, because whenever I have a thought that I end up realizing is wrong, I feel like, you know, maybe other people are having the same thought. So, for a while, the, the strategy of, again, deck manipulation first, especially when considering the idol, was I was worried I would get the serpent at a time where it doesn't proc. But it really is not that, that concerning. Like, it can happen. But what I did right here is exactly why I feel like you shouldn't be that worried, is you can always skip if it is proccing, or you can, you know, play the round, and then if it hits, then you can skip. If it doesn't, then you still have the third chance of the idol hitting on the card you want for the Serpent. But this is the hand that I came closest to hitting your E19. And obviously I did have the help of a lot of, you know, red sealed King Steel. So 
at the end of the day, I think your build in that anti-11 definitely was better considering all the things that need to go perfect for me to get a score close to that. Yeah, we definitely, you know, helped out here with the extra hand size with the steel cards as well. Um, but, you know, this is kind of a testament to, you know, how much you can pull off even without that many jokers, even without any scoring jokers. You know, yeah. with just the red steels and the glass cards, we got basically the same score, right? And so, you know, with a, a little bit more time, you know, we just pick up another joker and then now we're in the, you know, like E28 territory. Yep. And uh, I guess quick question, thoughts on the Serpent? Because I love the fact that there is a boss blind in the game that is very beneficial for high scores. Um, but we've had a little bit of debate in my Discord on whether like that really makes any sense in the game. It, the only downside to Serpent I've ever come across is if you're playing with Blackboard and you are annoyed because cards keep coming out that your hand size basically is too built big you're playing ba blackboard and the high card build it's so hyper specific other than that i've never run across a time where that boss mine actually is detrimental have you well if you're if you're playing blackboard you could just play five cards and then redraw three exactly like it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so there's... um I, th I think it's really fun i think um it will punish lower power builds it'll punish newer players in the very specific sense of you've got you need more than one hand to win like you need more than one five card hand to win mm -hmm. and so like if if your build is weak you know you don't have very high level uh planets you don't have very you know powerful jokers or not like not synergistic jokers and it's like oh i need here i need three flushes in order to win then you play the five card hand, you play the flush, and you only redraw three. And then it's kind of at least a little bit tough in that situation. But, you know, once you're at the level of managing your money better, you know, getting more booster packs and more jokers, higher quality jokers, then uh, it's really not a trouble. But I feel like that's the same with a lot of jokers. Or sorry, a lot of uh, bosses. Yeah, I mean... A lot of bosses are not, you, you can work around it. Like, and you've shown that beautifully on your channel again, because they, they say this about any sport or any game like chess or, or anything. If you have the very good core mechanics down, you can be good at that thing. And I think you demonstrate that very well in Blotra where you were so good at the core mechanics of making sure you're making the right decision almost at every single turn that not to use the word brute force, but You've, I think, proven that there's not too many runs in this game that seem like they are truly unbeatable. Like, there is RNG with everything, but because you're so fundamentally sound at the game, I, that's the word I'm looking for, you consistently can win. Um, there's obviously times where you're like, that really stinks to, to get a boss in that place. Like, the Flint in Anti-2 and you just weren't rolling good bosses on, you know, Gold Stake, or uh, rolling good Jokers on Gold Stake, but... Still, at the end of the day, the, the boss blinds are a hindrance, but you can work around them. Yeah, definitely, you know, it's different on the higher stakes. Um, you know, as far as, like, every game being winnable, probably mm -hmm. not. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I feel, you know, it's going to be different on different decks as well. But, you know, maybe 50% win rate at most. Maybe 30% win rate for the top decks for me personally i that's on like the highest difficulty yeah i think so i there's one um viewer in my channel he also streams on twitch i'll give him a quick little shout out spav he was the first person i knew to complete all the gold stakes the dude grinded the game and i would say now he plays only gold stake and he's been trying to go for the most amount of gold stake wins in a row and the most he's been able to achieve and we're talking about someone who just consistently puts hours and hours into the game he's on you know the level that I think me and you are on, or I'm not even going to say me, that you are on, and he still probably wins at, <laughs> again, you know, that 50% mark. And again, doing probably everything you absolutely can to win, especially when you consider how many hours they, you and him have put into the game. So I, I stand by that. I think you hit the number there. Yeah, uh, you know, in this thing, there's like a lot of chance-based things, right? You know, like yes. booster packs have a chance to not help you. You know, every time you reroll the shop has a chance to not help you. But if you just roll the dice enough times, it's going to come up favorable. Yeah. Enough times. 
Um, and so, you know, one of my favorites is uh, getting the, what is it, like the the Verdant Leaf, the boss where you have to, like, sell a Joker. Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, if you just have, like, high enough, if you have good enough Jokers, then you don't need to sell anything. Sell anything. Like, you could just yep. roll with the debuff. Or my favorite is getting that boss on, like, the Joker list challenge. <laughs> you know, it, everyone hates it because, you know, you lose all your enhanced cards, and then that's, like, what you were relying on for scoring. But if you're managing your money well enough and you're getting enough chances at getting planet cards, you can have high enough, um, you know, maybe, like, flush house or maybe high enough five of a kind that you can just win even without any jokers, even with all the debuffs on your cards. You heard it here first, everyone. Palachi University is going to do black deck, gold stake, joker list with Verdant Leaf. No problem. Actually, you know, by the time you uh, finish editing this and, you know, it goes live or whatever, I will have already started. I'm doing a series. I'm going to do joker list on as many decks as I feel like. I'm <laughs> up to five already. I like feel like that's a good way of phrasing that to to make sure expectations aren't too crazy, but it allows you to go there. Yeah, I'm not gonna promise that I'm gonna do all of them. I'm just gonna do the ones that are fun. There you go. Well, I already hit my high score here. I'm just kind of at this point, again looking for that blueprint or brainstorm, and again because I'm still running double vagabond at this point, and for some reason paying attention to it instead of realizing I should switch, um, and just worry about my economy now that I have. 20 cards in my deck and all 20 are kings of hearts uh i think i kind of realized at this point i'm like it's a little late i'm not really trying but we can yeah, wrap so, it up here uh, before we do you know a couple comments here just at the very end uh so one of the key differences in the end game here is the the bloodstone and so we said okay you know if you get it early on like we did in the fourth round it ended up being uh a trap but then, you know, here getting it in the mid game, you know, between like anti six and anti 10 or whatever, um, then it's going to carry you when idle doesn't. And then it's going to be there, you know, for the final scoring hand, you know, when you get to anti 10 or 11. Um, and then also, you know, here you had the, the seltzer and then now the seltzer is gone. Of course, we exhausted the seltzer. But then you know because we don't have the money anymore now we're not re-rolling and we're not finding anything else like that's kind of that the run runs out of steam there whereas yeah. the, you know on on our side here we can go a little bit longer and we can just keep digging if we want yeah exactly i think you you summarized it way better than i could um so yeah that's gonna wrap it up thank you so much Bellatrix university dr spectred professor spectred for hopping on my channel, for also making that incredibly kind video saying I deserve to win. Again, I fiercely rebuttal that statement. Uh, you clearly deserved to win the tournament, although I appreciate the kind words and the breakdown of kind of what happened in the final round. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, if you haven't seen Blotcher University's videos, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're on my channel and not Blotcher University's because you are gonna learn absolutely so much um, and most of all, you know, thank you to this entire community. It's been quite a ride for, I think, both of us. We have been blessed, I feel like, as content creators to have this game and have such great audiences. Um, not to speak for you. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you hate your audience. I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but <laughs> <laughs> it's been, it's been uh, really fun. We, we have a, a functional relationship. Uh, I like to tease them. I like to troll them. I like to tell them I'm doing one thing, but secretly I'm doing another thing. I, mean, I like to leave them guessing. There you go. And you keep getting away with it, if that's correct, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching. Again, um, to end this, go subscribe to Bellatra University. Go subscribe to Murphy. Go watch all the content that surrounded this tournament and go watch more content on his channel to learn more about the game. And if you have the means and you feel comfortable doing so, I'll leave the link down below to the Trevor project. If you want to donate yourself again, all the AdSense from this video will go towards that. And I will match the first month of revenue from the AdSense here. So thank you all. And we'll see you next time.